Well, ahead of the Global Hand Washing Day, we want to talk about now about this and more. We have Kate Namiaro, a senior environmental uh, health officer uh, from the Ministry of uh, Water and Environment. And we have Sam Andrew Kieser, a technical advisor from WASH, that is a plan international. Good morning. It's very exciting to have you, um, Kat and Andrew. Thank you. And I want to start with Andrew. And Andrew, you, you deal a lot with washing. How are we dealing? The other time, we came to the Ministry of Water and Environment, and there was a wash facility at the entrance. Yeah. And it was very critical to even the security guards that you could not access the building unless you've washed your hands. They were critical for 20 seconds. Yeah. That is at the Ministry. When you go to the field, our behaviors as Ugandans, how are we faring? Have we understood the instance of washing our hands? Thank you so much, uh, the moderator and mm. our viewers. Uh, I'll start from what's the status of hand washing yes. from that perspective. Mm. Um, the sector report that was released uh, shows that uh, hand wash, the percentage of people that access a hand washing facility with soap. Mm -hmm is uh, at 38 percent in rural areas wow and uh, when you look at urban it is at 61 oh. percent so uh, that clearly indicates that we need to do more mm. why is that uh, when you look at hand washing um uh, <coughs> in the light of covid19 mm. uh, first of all is that hand washing is the first line of defense mm. in, in preventing uh, uh, pandemics and uh, uh, epidemics, including uh, COVID-19. Mm. And uh, studies not in Uganda have shown that uh, hand washing with soap mm. can reduce the transmission of COVID-19 by at least 36 percent. Okay. So in this kind of scenario where you're finding that over 62 percent in rural areas mm. are not practicing and are not washing hands, mm. then we have a very big challenge. <laughs> we can't win the war. <laughs> it's really very big. And also in urban areas, mm. um, when you see that we are having about 39 percent who are not doing it, yeah. yet the majority of people are in, again in urban areas, then it's a big kind of challenge especially in the COVID-19 uh, uh, era. Mm. And uh, when you also relate it to the theme, a theme which is looking at... Of this year. Uh, of this year, mm. our future at hand. Mm. Let's move forward. Um, when you look at that, it clearly calls uh, for action. For us um, to leverage mm. onto the experiences of COVID-19, which asks us uh, to address uh, the, the historical neglect on mm. hand hygiene, mm. on the investments, on the policy, mm. and also the programs. Mm. Future at hand. Future at hand. Well, thank you so much, Kiza. Now, uh, still with us, we are having uh, Kat Namialo from the Ministry of Water and Environment. Uh, Kat, when you look at this entire day, it's, it's, it's one of the SDGs we, we need to deliver as a country. Yes, Tell us about the hand washing day and why do we need to commemorate it as a country from the ministry, ministry perspective? Uh, thank you so much, Andrew. Mm. Uh, the Global Hand Washing Day is celebrated every year mm. globally, not only in Uganda. Yeah. And it shines a spotlight mm. on the importance of hand, wa uh, hand washing, especially in prevention of hygiene related diseases. Mm. And uh, this was uh, uh, put aside by the United Nations mm. in 2006. Mm. And that came about because of the trivialization of hand hygiene. Yeah. And yet there's a lot more importance mm. of why we have to practice it every time. Mm. So this year, like my colleague Sama said, we're focusing on the theme which is our future is at hand. Mm. Let us move forward together. Mm. It's calling upon all stakeholders. Mm the governments, the private sector, the civil society organizations, mm. the, pri the private sector, the researchers, even the community members mm -hmm. to make sure that we make this hand washing with soap or practice hand hygiene and it's um, uh, mainstay in the public health mm. interventions, not just uh, during the COVID era, but even after so, mm. so that we can secure our future as a healthy one. 
Okay. Yes. Um, when you look at the statistics you gave us, it shows that um, in the rural setting, there is a percentage within the 30s that is trying to get there. Mm -hmm. um, have we cascaded this information to the locals in the villages that they understand the need for this? Not just washing with water, yes, but with soap. Yes. The, the two go hand in hand. When you go to the rural setting, you find that a pit latrine, there will be um, a jerry can of water, but without soap. Have we taken this information down? Yes, if we've taken it, what are the key challenges we're facing as a country that it has failed to, you know, switch to the behavior changes you want to achieve? Okay, thank you. Yes, we have taken this, uh, the information to the lower, mm. that we call them the rural, rural people. Yes. That is in the villages where I come from. Yes. That's in Kungulutale where I come from. Mm. And also other places of the country. Mm. But like you, and this is done through working together with the decentralized uh, bodies of government and mm. also working with our w wash partners, that mm. is the civil society organizations working, yeah. working in the water, sanitation and hygiene subsector. Mm. And uh, also using the structures that we find at the lower levels, that is the village health teams, the mm. parish chiefs, mm. and our local leaders. But like you said, we are hitting challenges. Mm. And some of those challenges are this, this uh, hand washing is trivialized. Mm. They feel it's not important. Mm. W there's a place we went to in Kamuli mm. uh, where we even had the president talk about his right hand being for the Ugandans and the left is his. It's his and it's the people were like, but why are you teaching us how to wash hands? We know these things, mm. but they don't see the importance importance mm. of why we have to do it and not just hand wetting but with soap mm. and also and that is um, something that we need to do a lot we as the implementers we as the advocates yeah. to make sure that it's now uh, uh, sustainable and uh, people now do the practice like uh, ha that habit like how you wake up in the morning brush your teeth mm. and all that so one of the challenge like I said is it's being trivialized mm. and also the funding Mm. When we talk about hand washing programs, everyone will be like, okay, why mm. put our money there? But mm. they don't know that prevention is better it's than, better than, better than cure. Mm. So there's a gap in funding. And then for me who works in the Ministry of Water and Environment, I, we usually get these questions. You're telling us to wash our hands with soap, but mm. where is the water? Yeah. So we have some places where we do not have access to clean water. Yes, we still have true. that challenge. But as government, we are not seated. We are working tirelessly to make sure that at least each village mm. in Uganda has access to a clean water and not just a car walking <coughs> for two kilometers but mm. having water in their yard. Now when, when you talk about water has the ministry tried to tap into the innovations of appropriate technologies in rural areas where access to facilities of like running clean water can be accessed? Yes, uh, we, we've uh, tapped into appropriate technologies. In fact, the Ministry of Water has a research arm that is called Appropriate Technology Center, which mm. deals with innovations of water supply and sanitation. Mm. So we've come up with many, like self-supply, mm. making sure that uh, this water, that the, when it rains, this water is not put to waste. Mm. Yep. It's not put to waste. Mm. Uh, so we are telling the communities, please put up, um, we train them on how to make the uh, rainwater harvesting tanks, mm. on how to tap that water, maybe to groundwater tanks and then pump it mm. to make sure that the water is supplied within the household. Mm -hmm. And then also now we are looking at the solar, the solar piped water supply systems, yeah. where we get a small borehole, mm -hmm. Uh, pump it up mm -hmm. and it supplies a wide area of people wow. within the villages. Mm. So we don't want those things of, you know, I don't know if you've Nikon. seen a bore, Nikon, yeah. <laughs> where you and when it pump breaks, and it all breaks. Yes, when mm. it breaks and also the maintenance is usually very funny and shady. Yes. So we are turning all those technologies to make sure that the Ugandans have access Wow. to water, clean mm. water in their yards, not having to walk a long distance to look for the water. That is Ket Namiaro and from the Minister of Water and Environment. But it's a conversation we are having. You wanted to supplement yeah, yeah, on that, yes. Kisa? Andrew, Andrew before, before you would go to the next issue, mm. I, I want to talk about uh, inadequate research and innovation on, on the, the smart hand hygiene solutions. Mm. Mm. 
Um, you realize that the COVID-19 the co <laughs> <yeah. laughs> COVID <laughs> pandemic uh, stimulated the private sector and the different act actors to really innovate. Yes. For instance, the hands-free facilities. Mm. Uh, but we need to do more because some of these ones, one, uh, what is uh, what is derailing and what is pushing back the the hand washing coverages some of them are not affordable yes some of them are not accessible especially for those with special needs mm. yeah. if you have used yeah. if you have and even where they are they are placed mm. they are not easily accessible especially for the people with disabilities mm. and those with other special needs for instance when you look at uh, the hands free mm. when you look at that pedo it's not children friendly mm. so those True. are the issues that mm. that really uh, that really uh, we need and she talked about funding <coughs> i think it's 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 I, sh I appreciate government has done its best mm. to fund but we need more funding oh yeah given uh, that actually there is evidence in terms of how really the hand washing can really block the roots of transmitting COVID-19 yes. can, can reduce on that impact. As we go to this new normal, mm. it is important for much more investment. For more funding. Um, in any way, did COVID-19 help you in the agenda of the hand rush to expedite the figures? Yeah. Yes, partly, <coughs> yes, it did because it, it critically uh, uh, pointed out the importance of hand washing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are seeing that during the COVID-19 era, uh, it became very clear for people to buy in hand washing mm. because they are looking at how am I blocking these roots. Mm. But also there is government commitment, actually, yep. in terms of putting some funding mm. and also promoting hand washing. Mm. I can give a case. Uh, when we look at schools, you are seeing that government was able to to allocate at least 1.5 million per each school yeah. to ensure that they are able to buy wash products mm. that are in position to counter COVID-19. But that is still so small mm. if you have to see the benefits of really Ideally, hand, how hand big washing. should it be from uh, your lenses? <laughs> yeah. Ideally is that when you look at the standards, for instance, mm. in schools, you expect that one hand washing facility should be used by 40 pupils. One. One. Okay. Now, as plan we are working in Nebi, Kamuli, and Wiende, and uh, the Wash SDG program and Wash Fast. And uh, we did an assessment and realized that where we are working, uh, given even the government intervention now, mm. the ratio of hand washing facility to people is 1 to 470. Wow. That means mm. that actually the initiative, mm. the, the focus is good, but we may not be in a position to realize the benefits of blocking the roots. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yes. So that is something that we... Yes. Yeah. So in a nutshell, yes, COVID-19 uh, helped us mm. to provide agency for hand washing, mm. helped us to continue advocating for hand washing, mm. helped us uh, in... Uh, in people to buy in hand washing, I think you you saw in every shop at a yes. rural area mm. having a hand washing facility with mm. soap. Yeah, it did. However, is that there has been a drop again? Mm. We have gone back. We, we have, have we have back, gone yes. back because mm. of what she discussed that it mm. needs to be a habit okay. that we need to take on. There has been a, a drop, and also uh, the enforcement has also. Gone slightly gone down, gone down. Mm. so we need to move back because COVID-19 is there to stay for some it time is, yes. so mm. as we move into the new normal our f the future of hygiene mm. is in our hands so for us to counteract COVID-19 we need to step up hand wash. Wow. Yeah. Kat when he talks about that and I look at the um, the behaviors of my peers in my community it, mm. it really resonates well mm. but again i want to understand what's the role of government and cso's in promoting hand washing maybe we just see them on the village level or maybe at a parish level and the, we don't know the rules do we even have a hand washing officer at the district level do we have someone at the parish level who needs to always drum for us the people you need to remember about hand washing uh, thank you so much, Andrew. Mm. That's a very interesting question. Mm. Yes, government and uh, the, um, the civil society organizations mm. are doing quite a lot of work 
to make sure that um, people are reached with messages and they're provided with the facilities. Mm. So the role is made for government, it's uh, first of all, is policy direction. Yeah. When we put up these policies, for example, Minister of Health tells you that in case, in, I, mean, I mean, if you want to prevent or to curb the <coughs> spread of COVID-19, you have to wash your hands. Yeah. You have to, e every institution should put up a, a hand washing facility which is accessible with clean water and soap. Mm. So those are the policies. And on top of that with uh, funding, he mm. mentioned about it, We've, uh, government is doing a lot to fund some of the hand hygiene uh, programs and mm. projects. And uh, though he said the money is still little, but yeah. at least it's something that mm. they are doing. And then we also of act as advocates. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you a story. Everyone calls me Madame Handwashing because mm. I'm very passionate about yes. it. Yes. So I, these are the things that government officers, civil society organizations, our political leaders, and mm -hmm. uh, everyone who wants to uh, see this agenda move forward, mm. they to advocate for proper handwashing with soap at mm. all levels. And then also we Can do... Bef bef before you leave there, yes, please. Um, political leaders, I, I know there is the government political will to, to expedite this conversation and cascade mm. it to mm. a month to and see where mm. we actually stay. Mm. But most politicians come up with these conversations of access to clean water mm. when they're going for elections. Mm. I'm going to make for you a well, I'm going to make mm. for you boreholes. Mm. And thereafter, when, when they go through if they end in parliament, I mean, they're done. They're done. We have had instances, we've run stories here where a former MP was beaten in the previous elections. He went and uprooted all the boreholes from the community. <laughs> when you're talking about political leaders yes. from the grassroots level, are they willing to participate in this? Not for the political card, but for the well-being of their communities. Uh, yes, for the places we've been to, they are willing, and that comes, of course, with a lot of uh, uh, advocacy meetings with them to sh tell wow. them the importance of having this, uh, mm. the sanitation and hygiene agenda pushed forward mm. in their communities. Because uh, you know, Andrew, these um, people listen to their leaders. They Me do. as Namiala will go mm. there, mm. and they'll be like, no yes. Yes. But when the councillor says, mm. like councillor said, mm. we have to to go with that. To go with mm. that, we have to wash our hands. We have to have a clean toilet. We yeah. have to make sure our the places where we're getting water from is clean. Mm. So we are doing a lot of advocacy okay. of the political leaders, mm. and uh, we also have uh, political willingness. We, uh, especially in the Parliament of Uganda, yes, we have the Uganda Parliamentary Forum on Wash. 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 Yes. So they also help us to advocate for proper wash and mm. funding and also talk to their fellow leaders mm. and uh, also we are now involving the institutions okay. like the kingdoms mm. the religious councils mm -hmm. to make sure that we don't stop just here but you know when uh, for example the Kawaka comes out and mm. says <laughs> everyone be like <laughs> yes. so that's the kind of information we are relaying to our mm. those to our leaders wow yes great conversation um, some previously when we're celebrating the hand wash day mm. we would have a press conference then before you know we'll be going around in some places there was a march with a big banner of hand wash mm. what are some of the activities that we're having this year given that we're dealing in a pandemic mode yet we still want to send the conversations to the last consumer yeah. Thank you so much, uh, the moderator <coughs> and our listeners. First of all is that we are we are having media engagement, and that's why we are here. We okay. Are this is the first activity. Not no. really the first <laughs> activity. Not the first one. <laughs> we had uh, 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 a media press briefing, which yes. was conducted mm. uh, for the media to buy in, but also mm. the media to help us amplify the theme mm. and also uh, mobilize all people in Uganda to embrace mm. really hand washing. Mm. Uh, that has happened. We are having multiple uh, TV shows mm. and radio talk shows mm. uh, that are really going on. Uh, Second is that uh, another activity that we are we are having is that we have had learning events. Yesterday we had a webinar, mm -hmm. an online virtual webinar, mm. where people are sharing their experiences 
on the innovations, mm. on the challenges, on the gaps and opportunities on hand washing, how far we have gone mm. and where they see us <coughs> moving. Um, also, we are having uh, community engagements at different levels. The Barazas. The, the, yeah, the barazas. I used to come for your Barazas. The there barazas. is one that was in my area um, about hand washing and um, I sat there for 45 minutes. Those ones are still mm. happening uh, mm. across the country because like uh, plan says mm. uh, plan is our partner mm. they are doing a lot of uh, those barrazas in the different districts mm. so we are not only targeting Kampala metropolitan mm. we are national uh, national mm. and maybe also another thing that is happening right now I mean we used to happen but because of the COVID-19 era mm. we cannot like start uh, convening very many people because yes. we used to go to districts mm. there's a time where in a park Kamoli mm. or Moros as in we would rotate across the country mm. but now because of the COVID-19 um, era then the observing the SOPs mm. we doing it we're going to have a physical commemoration mm. that will be at the Ministry of Water and Environment offices on Friday mm. yeah. and uh, many people <coughs> will be joining virtually on okay. different online platforms and we'll also be streaming it live i think yeah. ntv of course will ntv will, come. <laughs> we'll yes. will carry this yes. we need your support we, we are coming through on that yeah. so there's been a number of pre-events mm. like say media mm. the barazas mm. the uh, learning visits and all that mm. and it's not going to stop uh when we commemorate the mm. global hand washing day but it's going to be a continuous mm. like i always emphasize we need to make sure that this is a, a, a habit, habit. Mm. sustainable yeah. it's mm. a habit uh, so that is not just about COVID-19 but also uh, the prevention of other hygiene related diseases. Um, Sam, yeah. a few years ago you had hand washing clubs in schools yes. when schools were open. Mm. Now that they're not in school, yeah. what became of those clubs? I've been following this conversation. Yeah, comment. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's a good Still question, mm. and uh, and uh, y it's true that we had school the clubs, yeah. and now that the schools are closed, probably they are inactive. However, is that we have continued engaging them. Mm. Um, for instance, as Plan International, we are having uh, we are using the social structures, okay, uh, like the VHD structure and the the teachers forum. Um, to relay that message, they are able to mobilize these school health clubs mm. wherever they are in the communities so that they continue on with their activities. Mm. So that's there, but because of <coughs> COVID-19, it is not as rigorous as, 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 it, was. as it was. Okay. Which, which uh, also gives us to uh, think out of the box mm. that uh, now that the school health clubs are not active, what other structures can we use to relay the message? Mm -hmm. mm. So that's what we are doing. So what we are doing is that still we can and engage the school clubs through uh, the media. We are mm. able to identify the members of the school club and they're able to, to, to discuss issues on the radio mm. during talk shows and relate to the fellow kind of, uh, of people. So mm. that's what really happened. Uh, and what are the key messages uh, this time around, um, Sam, if I, may, if I may want to get in there? What are the key messages do we want our people to stay with after the celebrations? Because we just, like she says, it needs to be a habit. Yeah. We need to keep this conversation going. Yeah. I think the first message is uh, for people to continue maintaining the momentum of hand washing. Mm. Why is uh, hand washing is key in reducing the burden of diseases mm. uh, that have caused chronic challenge to the population, yeah. health and development. Mm. That's the first message. The second message is uh, hand washing is key in mitigating uh, the transmission of COVID-19. Mm. It is an essential preventative measure that we have to continue on as the government is continuing <coughs> to roll out the vaccination. Mm. That's the only option we, we have as of now. Uh, and also I call upon every uh, other stakeholders, especially um, the government, as I've said, because I'm coming from CSOs, mm. that they have done great. There's a lot of commitment, yeah. but we need more. Because if you are providing 1.5 million to a school, yeah. and uh, our uh, ambition is to have a hand washing people's stance ratio of 1 to 40, and you are having it in 470. So we need much more investment, much more prioritization. Mm. Uh, 
in a wash, especially uh, on hand washing, <coughs> but, but also investment in research, such that when you look at SDGs, they are looking at uh, uh, tackling exclusion and inclusion yes. for all. Mm. So we need to ensure that whatever interventions we are putting in place mm. are able to address the unique needs mm. of those with special needs, mm. and especially the, the women, especially people with disabilities, and the girls. Because for me, I'm um, a girls-focused organization. Mm. So if you are able to wash, if you are able to increase access to wash, mm. you are able to help them develop their potential, develop, develop well and realize their potential. Okay. Um, from the government aspect, um, there are always our call to actions yes. from the first unit of the family and to the village level, the parish level. What is our call to action, Kate? Uh, thank you, Andrew. Our call to action, mm. uh, first of all, I'll layer them to government, which, like you said, we are calling upon more funding towards uh, water, sanitation, and hygiene program programs, mm -hmm. especially on hand hygiene. And uh, for our civil society organizations and our donors, we, <coughs> we our call to action is to them to put in more funds. Mm in this uh, inclusive hand hygiene uh -huh. in Uganda. For our media, we, we call, uh, we, 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 we request that you, re you report on a daily mm. informative information on sanitation water and yeah. hygiene, yeah. and particularly hand hygiene. Mm. And then to our researchers, let them research more about this hand hygiene, how it's, uh, of course the, there's research that has been done, but how can we make this research e uh, easily interpretable and accessible to mm. the lower people? Mm. And then to our community members, we call upon them to become ambassadors at the grassroots grass 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 yeah. yes okay, we want everyone to become an ambassador mm. advocate for good hygiene and sanitation practices mm. wash your hands with soap and water all the time mm. not only when the hands are clean but before eating food mm. after visiting the toilet mm. after cleaning the baby's bottom yeah. uh, when you've touched surfaces mm. or when you're not sure that your hands are please wash them yeah. so that you can save time or when you're sick, mm. you save hospital bills, you're not in, you mm. save money. Yeah. Mm. So sure. that's a call to action to our community members. And mm. for the private sector, mm. we are calling them to action to make uh, hand hygiene uh, products easily accessible and affordable to yeah. our Omuntuwa ones. Affordability. Yes. Yeah. So, and remember, COVID is still with us. Yes. It's still not going away. Let's observe the SOPs. Mm. Those who have not been vaccinated, please go get go vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Mm. That's the only way we shall win the war against mm. COVID-19. When you talked about funds, I was thinking of something. Given that this is a national agenda, yes, is there a way uh, the ministry is planning for a Harambe move that from my village level, mm. me and my other peers, we can we can contribute the little we have to have hand washing facilities, be it at every home, be it at every school, every church, something of the sort. The same way we donated for COVID-19, mm. can we use the same approach for hand washing? Now you've talked about a very innovative way of mm. getting funds. I think we can uh, because we, we can we take it up. Government doesn't mm. have a lot of we money. Do not yeah, have and the money. funders are equally affected by pandemic. So yes. how do we deal with it? So we are, like you've said, uh, it's going to be an innovative way. We're going mm. to uh, bring it up to the top policy. Yeah. <coughs> and we see how we can do that Harambe move because mm. like schools are going to open and most of the schools do not have access to this. Mm. Facilities, so we can use maybe the the churches, the yeah. mosques, the barazas, and mm. say wh whoever has something, please put here, mm. so that we can contribute to school A or market A or mm. community B, something mm. like that. So wow. it's a very good, innovative yeah. way. Thank you, Andrew. Well, there you have it. That is my personal thought and a humble thought. If you realize that government is not coming as fast as you expect it to come, please take it upon you and you make sure that you contribute the little you can in your community and we
you know, keep this conversation going, the hand washing. It saves you a lot of money. It saves you from the diseases. But not only that, it keeps us clean as a community. Those who have innovation and innovative ideas on how best we can have clean running water in our communities, please don't hesitate. Tap the Minister of Water and Environment on Twitter, or you can look out for hand washing or Plan International. Put your idea there. I'm sure they'll actually pick it and they'll run with it. It's a very great morning, and this is all I had for you today. But given that we're done with that conversation, I want again to amplify this. Today is a no bra day globally <laughs> for the women. No bra day. Now, a day observed uh, every 13th of October is a move to create awareness about breast cancer. Today we've been talking about hand washing, dealing with other germs that come through, but breast cancer is something that is killing our sisters, our mothers, and our beloved ones. Please go and make sure you check for breast cancer. If you're a woman out there and you're watching and you're listening today, please be that person. Go out there and get yourself screened for breast cancer. Not forgetting the coffee Coffee is the biggest product we have. Don't look at it as a crop. Look at it as a brood, a gold mine. Go get yourself a coffee today from Inspire Africa Coffee or from the coffee city in Tinder. And that said, I want to wish you the best of the day. If you're not vaccinated, go get vaccinated. But even when you're done being vaccinated, wash your hands with clean running water and soap for at least 20 seconds. Or sanitize whenever you can. Wear your mask correctly and avoid big crowds. People, don't go for weddings where people are very many. Don't go for bad if people are many. Send them a go. I mean, we can deal with that some other way. Your safety is very key. But please and please go for vaccination. I'm Andrew Chama. Get on to our and see.